Thanks so much for joining Creating with Cassie Sculpture Felting 101. Allow me to share with you just how easy it is to create fun sculptures with wool roving and needle felting tools. Let's get started. So on there, but once you learn the basics, you'll be able to figure out how to make the rest of these. To me, when I was watching her videos and just kind of thinking about how to do this, Think about like when you're sculpting and creating with clay, it's a lot like that. But instead of slipping and scoring, you needle felt the pieces together. So let's go ahead and move this stuff out of the way. You're going to need your cushion, your needle, and your core wool. Basically what we're trying to do is take the core wool and make it into something a lot more solid like this with needle felting. Could you use fiber fill? Sue, could you use fiber fill? Somebody is asking. I have a feeling your answer is going to be no, simply because um, this is wool roving. So you're going to take this and just kind of unroll it a little bit. And what your goal is right now is to basically create this. So to get to that, you're going to, uh, Sue just answered your question. She said, no, you cannot use cotton batting. You need to use wool. So that's what we've got here. So to start, you're just going to begin by rolling this like a coil, but you need to roll it tightly because our goal is to kind of uh, make everything nice and tight. And as you're doing this, you're going to be rolling it and also tucking the fiber inward like this. So Jessica says you can use fiber fill, but maybe she's using that as the base and then attaching the roving over it. I don't know. I've never done that before, so I can't totally speak from experience. So once you've got this rolled a little bit tightly and this tucked, to hold it in place, you're going to need to stab it a little bit. So watch your fingers. I don't have my stick with me handy. So I'm just kind of tacking this down. But as you guys know from needle felting, the more that you stab it, the more dense and compact it becomes. So this is basically creating the height of my um, penguin. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just rolling, tucking, stabbing. And you're basically going for that kind of um, conical, kind of cone shape, like what you have, like you see here for this penguin. So there we go, setting that dude aside. Stab it, stab it, stab it. And then stop, drop, and roll, or roll, tuck, and stab. Hey, Jane, I'm so glad you're here. I'm guessing everybody is stabbing, and that's why I'm not hearing from anybody. Somebody tell me a joke. If you're not participating in stabbing, then you at least have to join the fun and keep us all wildly entertained by telling us jokes. I would tell you a joke, but the joke was on me today when half of my kids were going bananas. Had one kid putting erasers in his ears. I mean, they weren't even my erasers. Like, where do you even get? Why are they? Oh, my. I mean, <laughs> it was just one of those days. Jane says, you missed me. Jane, you missed the first three minutes. Ain't able to restart from the beginning of the next part. How do you make a tissue dance? Oh, Megan, we all know. Megan, I got so many tissues dancing right now. Where do pencils go on vacation? Pennsylvania? Where did the, I love your jokes. Where did the cow go to see art? Mm, I don't know. I bought my shoes from the drug dealer. What is a pirate's baby? favorite letter? Ah, Pennsylvania, where... Now I'm going to be too busy watching y'all's jokes and I'm going to end up stabbing myself. I'm going to have a bloodied penguin. So you might notice as you're doing this that it's becoming, mine is becoming a lot more compact, but mine is also stretching out. Um, oh, a museum. Silly me. Wah, wah. I need like a drum set, but I'm bumped. So I can already see I need to bend this one in a little bit. There we go. I think that'll be better. Watch those fingers. Uh-oh, Jane, you better go find your needles. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. No sharing needles. Go find your needles. Oh, my word. Museum. Hey, Meryl. 
All right. So what I like about this, because when um, Sue first sent me these, I had assumed she wet felted them. And I was a little like, ooh, but this to me is so much easier. So Sue, if you're still here, is this, um, it doesn't feel like wool, but it's got to be. So tell us if you're here, what is core wool? Is it called core wool because it's at the core of your sculpture? I mean, that would make sense. All right. Now, you guys, I'm just going to, like I said, show you how to make a penguin. Don't feel like you have to make a penguin. If you want to do something totally different, go for it. I'm just going to show you the penguin because I feel like it's one of the easier ones to do. But we can definitely talk about how to um, add more things to ours. Oh, you guys. Um, hey, Jane, we need to make um, art penguins. <laughs> My penguin's going to have a palette and a beret. Yes. It's going to be like a mascot. A mascot that does not put erasers in its ears. <laughs> if you're here. Yes, I am summoning a ghost. Catherine, how do you find Ronald McDonald at a nude beach? I don't, why would you want to? That's the question. I don't know. Do tell while I get a tissue and put a little boogie in it. Oh, that was gross. But I'm just basing it off y'all's jokes. Y'all are the ones to blame. Just watching tonight, says Jackie. Oh, Jackie, tell me about it. Uh, I think we were commiserating earlier before I went to Darth Vader mode. Oh, Sue says this is 100% wool, just processed in a different way to make it dense and fluffy. Good to know. Thank you, Sue. Okay. There we go. Somebody... um. I feel like last week or fairly recently was saying that they, and maybe one, maybe one of it, I can't talk, maybe it was one of you guys who are joining us, that you used a styrofoam base and that you, um, I don't know if you needle felted or wet felted around that. So rolling like a sleeping bag and stabbing. Yeah. Oh man, sleeping bags. Yes, exactly. That's the Perfect way, Jane, to describe it. He's the one with the sesame seed buns. Ha, hilarious. Um, yeah, gosh, remember, do kids even have those kind of sleeping bags? Remember what a drag it was when you had that teeny tiny little duffel for your strawberry shortcake. Mine was strawberry shortcake because I love me some strawberry shortcake. Or Smurfs sleeping bag and you did you had to fold it in and roll and you had to roll that sucker tight because the duffel bag was so stinking tiny Ugh. how do you add little legs sue says i have done this on styrofoam but lots of trouble with breaking needles i can imagine yes girl scout says jane we're going to get to the little legs i'll definitely show you but if you can't hang around and watch all of it tonight like i said sue her um youtube channel is susan bunch and she has great felting, needle felting, wet felting videos on there. And she does this one, and she actually has little feet on the penguin. So if you don't get to it tonight, or if you miss part of it, or if you just want to jump ahead and find out how she did it, her video is up, Susan Bunch on YouTube. Um, I think I, nor maybe because we're from Joliet, you know, maybe there was like a strawberry shortcake thing. Oh yeah. And they did always smell rainbow bright sleeping bag. I loved rainbow bright. I had, um, return of the Jedi bed sheets that I eventually made into a dress. Um, so I was kind of like, I had a canopy bed growing up. Did any of you guys have canopy beds? Is that like so eighties? I cannot believe I had a canopy bed, canopy bed that had star Wars, um, blankets on it, which is kind of funny. Kind of funny. All right. So I'm getting near the end. Are you guys with me on this? Or do How many of you guys are currently closing in on this stage? Can you give me a thumbs up? Oh, awesome. Great. Two of you. <laughs> so it's, I mean, you see, this is pretty stinking easy. I don't know that I would do this with my students simply because um, patience is not something we have a lot of or time and just the repetitive stabbing. But if I had like an art club or a small group, oh, good, a couple more thumbs. I think that that would be good. A couple more thumbs at Sunday Penny. Care Bear, oh, yeah, Cabbage Patch. Oh, it's like we're taking a trip down memory lane. We're all like 80s kids. Do we, we must have some 
Surely we have some youngins in the house who are, I don't know what they're going to be into, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm trying to think. My brother is 10 years younger than me. I'm trying to think what he grew up loving, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Hot Wheels. Of course, I loved Hot Wheels too. Okay, so now Sue's, she, you, now I can tell um, that hers, I think I might have packed mine in a little tighter. Hers, mine is a little bit more dense. Hers is a little bit squishier. Um, but... In her video, she said, if you want to make this bigger, if this shape is not big enough for you, if you wanted to make this larger, then all you have to do, I'm going to grab a piece. I'm just going to show you because I'm going to stick with this size. It doesn't even have to be the same color because we're going to be covering it with different colors of roving. Um, she said that when you have this kind of roving, it should be about 12 to 15 inches in length. Yes, Meryl, Susan Bunch, that's our gal. 12 to 15 inches in length. Correct me, Sue, if I'm wrong about that. And, of course, my roving is a lot thinner, so I would need to kind of um, spread it out a little bit more, I'm assuming, just to kind of get it to be the same width. In fact, since it's so thin, I think I would probably put a couple of layers of roving. But to continue to get this to increase in size, just take more roving and continue to do the same thing. Now, like I said, this roving is not big enough or thick enough. I would just have to add more, but just continue rolling, tucking it in like we said, sleeping bag, like Jane said, and um, um, needle felting. Sue says you can also look up Sue Bunch on um, YouTube. Let me, sorry, just taking care of my leaky nose. All right, so now I've got this part completed-ish watching out for my fingers. Now, like I said, I'm going to do a penguin, but before I do that, I'm going to start working on the parts. And this is where I feel like, Sherry found you on YouTube, Sue. Um, this is where I feel like it becomes a little bit like clay because you now are going to be creating the parts of your penguin. So in this case, you can make the flippers. Um, Sue in her video shows how to make the feet, which I can show you how to do. And then also the little beak. So I'm going to set this guy aside and, um, I've got my black, but who's to say it has to be a black and white. Um, you could do like, I saw one on YouTube that was like this really cute turquoise penguin and it was holding like a little pink heart. And I thought that was adorable. So if you don't have black, think about some other, I mean, it's an artsy penguin, so think about some other colors you might want to use. So if you're doing something like the, um, the flippers, let's say, which I'll see if I can get this really close for you to see, it's thin, so it's not like really thick roving, and it's not super dense. And when I was looking at these, like I said, I assumed that Sue had, did, had, did, had done wet felting, but she actually did needle felting for this. So she just took some of the roving, and overlapped it because she wanted it to be a little on the thicker side. And when you're doing this, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It looks a little dark from my perspective. Um, turquoise. Hey, Jane, I can't wait to see it. That'll be cute. I'm just kind of shaping it a little bit. And it feels like it might be the right thickness. So I'm just going to stab it a little bit. And as you go... You can always kind of comb the fibers in to help shape it. Now, one end, leave a little bit fuzzy because this is where you will be attaching it to the penguin's body. And it'll be easier to needle felt those kind of wispy fibers in. So I'm just kind of combing this part in. I should probably have two going side by side. That way, when my arms are created, hey, Ashley Bruce is here. Somebody was just asking where Ashley was. Where Ashley at? That's kind of how my friends talk. Where Ashley at? There she is. Who was looking for Ashley? You guys are like high school buddies, aren't you? I think that's, or something. You go way back. I think that's super awesome. I love it. Stabbing is so incredibly satisfying. Uh, yo. Um, so actually what I decided to do was just kind of put both of the flippers side by side. That way, as I'm making them, I can kind of eyeball it and make sure they are both about the same size, same thickness. So that way I, oh goodness, fingers, I don't end up with like 
one kind of, you know, stubby arm and the other one looking normal. And as you do this, if you do it too much, it's going to end up sticking itself to your cushion. So make sure you take this, peel it gently, flip it over, and this is going to be a process you're going to continue. You're going to flip it and stab it on the other side as well. Now I need to play catch up. Ashley, I'll catch you up. It's what we've done so far is uh, we've talked a little bit about how crazy school is. We listen to me talk in a Darth Vader voice because I accidentally hit some sort of crazy weird button. And now we're making penguins. And we started by making this um, conical body. And we did that with the core wool that Sue sent. So I'll get back to that in just a second. And we'll catch you up. Um, will it be shrinking? Jane, anytime you needle felt, it's always going to get smaller because those fibers are kind of creeping inward. So yeah, mine is definitely shrinking. So Jane, yeah, start, I guess, a little bit bigger. And so now you can see this one's a lot larger or smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and start stabbing this one. So I'm trying to keep them both even. Can you use pre-felt for parts like flippers? Ooh, Megan, why are you just not asking that, Megan? Um, I'm going to say, yeah, Sue's going to jump in here and be like, Cassie, no, but I have a feeling that the answer would be yes. The thing with the pre felt is, is that it's a little thin, but I mean, for this sake, I say go for it. That'll be a great thing for us to use to make like a little bow tie because you can cut it and just kind of stab it into place. Shrinkage. I also, oh yes, we had bad joke telling. See, Ashley, you, you didn't miss much, but you kind of did. Yeah. Mm. And then... Truth be told, I deleted the prior video because the Darth Vader voice was so crazy. Can you just have the core wool be your final sculpture? Why not? I mean, boom, done. Extra tall marshmallow. Sculpture complete. Yes. Think you could try the pre-felt for the flippers or feet. Add the color over it, too. Yeah, I'm assuming Sue is telling you to add the color over it because it's too... Um, it's very thin. And so what I'm doing now is just kind of flipping it, stabbing it, flipping it until it becomes more um, dense. And in fact, I'm going to hold this up and see, holy cow, my penguin has orangutan on. <laughs> so like maybe um, they're a little long. So now they're going to be, oh, look at that. I'm either making share or maybe... Um, What's the guy from Kiss with the really bad, like, crazy, doesn't it look, what is it, Gene? Is it Gene Simmons? Uh, why are you stabbing both sides? Darla asks. Uh, I missed that. Darla Marie. Here's Walliger. Um, because you want to make sure that if you only are stabbing it on one side, it's just going to end up sticking to your cushion. Plus, it helps to felt it better if you kind of flip it back and forth and stab so, what did you learn how to do tonight when you were stabbing stuff with Cassie? I learned how to make an extra long marshmallow and gin summer. You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I really want one of you guys to make a gin summer now. <laughs> that would be so sad. An unappealing little needle felted sculpture. All right, so... This, you would continue this process because as you can see with Sue's, it's a lot more compact, dense. Mine is still a little on the fuzzy wuzzy, was a bear side. Um, so instead of you sitting here watching me do this, don't you kind of wish sometimes you could have like this magical way to just blah, 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 stab super fast? Um, you guys, did you know that they make a needle felting gun? It looks like a um, hot glue gun, but it has several needles sticking out of it. And when you pull the trigger, it literally goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I guess a lot of sculptors use it and puppeteers. It looks like something that would cause me for sure to end up in the ER. I mean, I would. It, I know I would end up like bloody. Um, but, but at the same time, it's pretty fascinating. Simplicity makes it. Oh, simplicity makes it. Simplicity also makes the um, the sewing machine, the felting sewing machine that I have as well, which I love. But it do, it wouldn't do stuff like this very well. I think it would just end up chewing this kind of stuff up. What? 
I kid you not, Liliana. I'm just watching tonight, but I'm Tedly going to make a whole kiss fan. I am Tedly holding you to that. I am going to need those. Yes, that would be amazing. I'm going to need that stat. Stat. Uh, okay. Putting this guy aside, can you imagine giving that to the kids? No, actually, I cannot. I absolutely cannot. Um, so here I have, a, yeah, a masterpiece complete. Now let's talk about the flippers for a second while I take care of my leaky nose. Um, for the flippers, um, you could use any color you like. I'm going with black because it just happens to be sitting right here. You're doing the exact same thing, except obviously this shape would be too big. So instead, I'm just going to pull smaller shapes. And like I said, I'm just taking a break from this so that I can show you how to do the next step. So I just overlapped a couple. And I'm doing that thing where since I want them to be the same, I think doing them side by side really helped me make sure they were the same. And I want them to be a little on the smallish side. So I'm actually going to fold that in half a little bit like this. Just like with the flipper, keep this part kind of wispy because that's where you'll attach it. So I'm going to keep this part wispy because it's going to be attached like that. What part are you making now? I'm making the feet, please. Which this one doesn't have, but somebody asked, how do you make like little feet? And Sue actually demonstrates how to make little feet on her YouTube channel. So I thought I would show you how to do that as well. So I just pulled smaller, or not smaller, shorter tufts of roving. I, I'm folding it in half, um, and I'm going to shape them into kind of a foot shape, which basically is going to be a small oval because I ain't trying to be fancy. I'm just trying to make a foot. Um, by the way, one thing I am really excited about making is um, cactuses or cacti. Um, oh no, somebody's bleeding. Darla's recommending a band-aid. Get a tourniquet. You know what I had to do one time? Oh, this is a sad story. Do you want to hear a sad story? So one time I was having a craft night. I was hosting a craft night, believe it or not. And I got this idea in my head to make hummus. Now, that's a stupid idea because you can buy hummus for like three bucks at the grocery store. In fact, I just bought some tonight, but I wanted to make hummus because I was feeling kind of fancy. Um, and did you know this? If you're going to make hummus, that <laughs> you can actually skin the chickpeas. If you open up a can of chickpeas, it's actually quite satisfying. You just take a little chickpea between your fingers and you pinch it. And when you pinch it, you have to do it like that. Pinch it. When you pinch it, um, it leaves behind like a little bit of a skin. I won't tell you what the whole thing looks like. It's, just, it's naughty cakes. And then you're left with like a little skinless chickpea. And it makes for a smoother, creamier hummus, in which case nobody will notice that it's smoother and creamier because you skinned it. But there's just, it's like popping, um, it's like popping bubble wrap, that little that you can do. Anyway. So I was making hummus and I was barefoot because it was summertime and I was taking apart the food processor and the food process, yes, like a zit, the food processing blade fell on my foot. And if this were my foot, it fell like if, if this were my big toe, which would be weird if I had toe fingers, it fell right here. So every time I took a step, it was like blood squirting and I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, my kitchen, because I kept moving around and trying to get, you know, walking a little bit because I was like, oh, it'll stop. Every time I bet my foot, it just shot blood all over the floor. It looked like an episode of Dexter in my house. I love naughty cakes is my new saying. <laughs> You're welcome. So I, I, I'm standing in the kitchen hoping that it will stop bleeding. And then I realize I'm going to have to go to the, you know, a medical clinic just to get at least two stitches because every step I took, it was like bleh. So I am, because I'm a baby, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to faint. I'm losing so much blood. You guys, I lost maybe like a small puddle. Regardless, I go upstairs to get a Band-Aid or anything to kind of keep this thing from bleeding all over the place as I get to the doctor. And the only thing I can find is a tampon. So I thought, well... It, that, it's just doing its job. So I put the tampon 
on my foot and I shoved my foot in a sock and I put my foot in a shoe and I went to the medical clinic. And when I got there, the doctor said, okay, go ahead and take your shoe off. Let's take a look. And I tried so hard. He turned his back for a second. I tried so hard to take off that shoe and take off that sock and just kind of like, take off the table and off my foot. And the doctor happened to turn around at the very time I was doing that. And he said, was that a tampon on your foot? When she said, you know, that's not a bad idea, but I'm pretty sure he was just feeling sorry for me thinking I was cray cray. But all that to say, um, I don't even know what got me down that road. Maybe because we were talking about bloodied fingers that somehow led to making hummus and using tampons as tourniquets. There you go. Great story. I know, right? I'm, I'm sensing... Megan, the sarcasm, and I um, understand completely. All right, so here's my little foot. Here's my flippers, and so somebody was asking what this is. So these will be the little flippery feet, and I'm going to um, have to make them a little bit maybe more narrow. Um, but anyway, so that's what I'm going for here. So I'm just curious, um, are you guys making penguins, or are you going for something totally? <laughs> Thanks, Megan. I was just messing with you. Um, I'm sure he's seen worse too. Oh, yeah. I mean, we are in Tennessee, so I'm pretty sure there's some pretty sketchy stuff he has seen at the doctor. I got a goiter. I don't know why that just comes to mind, why I think Tennesseans might have goiters. just seems appropriate. Um, oh, somebody's making an octopus, Allison. Hot pink otter. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I do want to... Um, tell you that I will have to needle felt these all further. I'm just kind of, I don't want to say rushing through this, but I am kind of going a little speedily just so I can, um, tampons are great for nosebleeds. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine having that string though? Hanging out of your nose. You know what though? That being said, I probably would have, if I would have thought about that, I would have done that for all the nose blowing I've had to do. I would have just, yeah, never mind. Anyway, Somebody's making a chicken. Bethany, I'm working on the flippers. They're a little lopsided. I just want to stop for a moment and show you that if you were doing something like this, Sue, this is a little bit more dense, but this would have been created the same way. You can kind of see where she left that um, fibery kind of ending and then just needle felt it to attach it. But this is a pretty well needle felted. I can, it's dense and I can tell she took a lot of time to to get that denseness to it. Glad she didn't include those in the kit. <laughs> yeah, that would have been like Everybody would have been like, uh, 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 okay. Got the tampon in case I stab. She must really think we're going to get bloody. These, of course, we all know how to make our felted balls because we had that conversation last week. But when she was doing it, she was, instead of using wet felting, she was simply taking the roving and um, I believe just kind of rolling it. Yeah, I'm going to say the flippers are going to go over the head because I made mine too long. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But if you're doing these different parts of your sculpture, like the cat muzzle, so I just kind of rolled that into a ball shape and then watch them fingers. We ain't got tampons on here, I'm so but careful. And then you can just kind of start creating that shape. This is why it reminds me so much of clay, because it's like you're sculpting, sculpting, you're sculpting, you're sculpting, um, and just kind of, I feel like with clay, the beauty of it is, is that as long as you know how to make a slab, a coil, and a sphere, you can make anything. And I try to get the kids to understand it, and believe me, um, but I feel like that's the same with felting. If you can make a slab, a sphere... And a coil, even if they're small, you can create anything. And once you know the basics on how to create a coil, a slab, and a sphere, then the possibilities are endless. Um, if the flipper is too long, just pull a bit off, Sue says, or trim with scissors and needle felt to the cut edges. There you go. Sue speaks because she knows. All right, so I don't know why I'm still doing this because I don't think I'm going to use it on my penguin. So let's talk about how to attach this stuff. I'm finding the nicest little area. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I can see it. My roving, 
tell Emma I said hi. I really miss her too, Kelly. Thank you for saying that. Um, she's tried this before, but wasn't quite successful. You know, Kelly, what we're learning is is that there's a it's a it's a process. We've all been trying it, and we've had some hits and misses together. But tell Emma that I miss her and that I said hi as well. I lost my connection, Beth. You didn't miss much. I just told a nasty story. Um, so this. I don't love the look or texture of, and so what you could do is make it a little bit smoother if you want to get fancy and just add a little bit of white roving on top. Or if you're changing the color of it, I know some of you guys said, I probably shouldn't be doing that with these guys underneath. I don't want them to get needle felted onto it. I know some of you guys are doing a variety of colors. So let's say you're doing, somebody was doing an octopus. Let's say you're doing a purple octopus or a yellow or pink or whatever. Um, now's the time to start adding your color on top. So Sue had a white base inside of here, but used this yellowish orange roving and just kind of wrapped it like this around. And I'm doing that for the white of my um, penguin's tummy. And how did you get the body uh why can't I read the body white part? Um, that, Meryl, I use this, this um, core wool that Sue sent me. Um, the cone-shaped bases look so smooth, just needle felted longer. Yeah, I'm guessing. She needle felted it longer. This part I can tell she needle felted more because it's more dense. This one is nice and flat, so she probably stabbed this quite a bit to make it flat. Um Sometimes it's more important, the process, exactly. The process is more important than the outcome. That's kind of how I feel with most of my um, felted creations. Like we were talking about last week, how like when you go to art retreats or art PDs, I just have to force myself to think of it as a learning process. Otherwise, I get completely overwhelmed. Right now, I'm trying to figure out which side is more flat. I think this side is, so this is going to be my bottom so I'm just going to go ahead and needle felt that some more so that it stands upright. I can tell this, get off of there. I can tell this is a little fuzzy. Uh, so I'm going to bring that inward. I bought a pair of felt penguins from Etsy and they look just like that. Well, girl, no more buying from Etsy because now you know how to do it. Um, hi, Lauren. We have a small little group today joining us. Usually our crowd is much bigger. Where is everybody? They are missing the stabbing funness. Is it a good idea to use the three needle tool from Clover that you introduced us to? You know, that's a good question. Do I see mine? Is mine on hand? I could grab it and just see. I mean, it's worth a shot. It's giving you three times the amount of contact. I just don't know. Like these needles that Sue get, has given us um, or that we got from Sue are a little bit thicker and the one in the clover tool, I noticed they break a lot easier. And that's because they're a lot finer. And I, you could try it. Why not? I always say give it a shot. But just be careful. Make sure to keep it perfectly vertical because those have a tendency to snap. I had a hard time getting on early because my link wouldn't work. Darla had to tag me in. Oh, that's weird. I wonder. That is so weird. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Ashley. I don't know what's going on. Ow, I just stabbed myself. Um, Lauren needs more needles. Lauren, you can get more needles from Sue. Um, it looks like mine's going to stand. So all I did was just kind of needle felt across the bottom, but I don't like that my penguin's going to have a square kind of head. So now I'm going to work on making it more like a cone. So to do that, I'm just going to needle felt the end and just kind of roll and felt. Yeah, I just broke a clover needle for my try to. I broke those all the time. And I'm telling you, you'll, you'll start breaking them less, but I feel like they break easily on this. Those fine needles do not like this. These bigger needles, they work great. So that's why when you get that three-pronged needle, you'll need to get the cushion, that little green cushion to go with it. How do we reconnect help? I don't know. Need to order, Lauren says. Lauren, I've also, um, yeah, Sue would be your best bet, I think, to get a large pack of needles. I always think it's good to buy a bunch. Um, because when you're learning this, there is um, there is a lot of breakage. All right, so I feel like I've got a pretty good cone shape happening, y'all. 
switch to the other cushion. Yeah, I really have found that um, that clover one, it works best on that bristle. Um, and that's what I used forever and ever. And now I didn't used to like just using a single needle, but now I actually kind of enjoy it. But if I were needle felting a sweater or something, I would definitely switch back to my bristle cushion and to my bigger needle felting tool just because you can get more done that way. Hi, Cassie. Late tonight, but it looks good. Really? I'm Barb. I love you for saying so. Barb, we're making um, marshmallows. Aren't I doing swimmingly? Extra tall. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Okay, so I feel like my cone for my penguin is looking pretty good. It's going to be its like crazy looking cousin. Uh, Patty, Pepper, Priscilla. Priscilla, that's it. Hey, doll, for the cone, did you just start stabbing the whole cone? No. Let me, Ashley, let me back up real quick so you can get caught up. Guys, I'm assuming you're still stabbing for a minute. Is it cool with y'all if I talk to Miss Ashley for a minute? In case you're just joining us, our friend Sue, she sent us this guy. Ashley, I assumed too that you just started stabbing, but no. Sue has a wonderful YouTube channel that you can tune into. Thank you, guys. Hey, Dion. So um, you'll unroll it. And then Jane said, it's just like when we all used to go to sleepovers back in the day and we all had those sleeping bags that you had to roll in. So roll in, hold, stab. That needle felting is what's going to hold it in place. And once you've got it rolled in a little bit, roll, tuck in the bottom, tuck in the top, stab. Just You're basically just tacking it in place. And then roll. Rinse and repeat. You feel me, Ashley? So you're just basically, watch them fingers, rolling. When it starts to get a little wide, like mine's getting, or maybe actually before that, because I was going to have a hard time doing that. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, tuck, roll, stab. And then if you continue with that process, and the key is to keep this, just like them sleeping by eggs, keep this um, nice and tight as you're rolling because you're trying to make it nice and compact. Ultimately, Sue sent me some finished ones. Now she had more, I'm assuming she used more roving here, but you can see this is really nice and compact. And this is the base that she uses, used this for, she used for the cat penguin, the bunny, which holy moly, that's like beyond my skill level. But you know what? Like I said, you know how to make a slab. You know how to make a sphere. You know how to make a cone. You got this. Did you wet felt the ears to the cat? No, she, this whole thing is needle felted and I will show you how to do that right now, Katie. You asked it just the right time. So now I have my shape. Let's start putting together Priscilla, the penguin. So I made my little flippers really long, which they don't have to be this long. So I'm now going to try to decide where I want them to be. We all said this looks a little like uh, Gene Simmons. So to get that in place, I mean, come on, that's hilarious. Last question. Do I use the whole roll? Yes, I use, this is the whole roll, sister. And then I just added a little bit of the white roving over that and needle felted that in place just because I didn't like all my little stabby stabs um, and I wanted it to be nice and smooth. So now that I've got this flipper where I kind of want it to be, like I think it'll look cute like that. Oh, but you know what? I don't want to attach this yet. If I attach this now, I won't be able to get the roving all around the body. So I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me set my two flippers and my feet aside. And now what I'm going to do is just do this overall coloring of the body. So I don't know how we are on time. I try to always, I try not to keep y'all up too late. Um, but if you're cool to keep going, I'm just going to keep on trucking. I'm going to pull this. So I know that I want this to kind of dip downward. Let me think about how I want to make this happen. So it's going to dip a little bit like this, like this lovely widow's peak kind of deal. So I'm just holding that in place and just tack it a little bit, watching for fingers. Because I, if you tack it a little bit, anything you don't like, you can always 
Random thumbs up. I'm guessing that means we're good. Ran out of turquoise. Plan B. Plan B. Oh, it's late for you, Megan. Ran that out. Um, you can always take it out. Now I've got, um, looks like the monster kid. What was the little monster? Eddie? Was it Eddie his name? I got my Eddie monster with the long hair or the mama. Mama monster. I forget what her name was. Eddie monster. Thank you, Earl. <laughs> it looks like Eddie monster with the long hair. I forget what, ma what was mom. Morticia. Morticia. Well, I lost my connection during the penguin, so now I'm just winging it. Was the pun intended about the winging it? Just curious. Um, so I'm just kind of stabbing that in place. Of course, I would do a whole lot more, but I'm showing you this to let you see that now this guy could now be added. Maybe I'd bring that in just a little bit more, just basing it off of Sue's look. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll bring that in a little more. Take this out and bring that in and over. There we go. My bluebird has a color. <laughs> Oh man, I cannot wait to see. Hey, once again, um, I've been sharing y'all's creations on my blog and uh, y'all are amazing. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out that blog post, but the variety of things that people are creating is just bananas. It makes me so happy. I love what y'all are making. And if you want to finish Morticia <laughs> or whatever it is you're making, um, and share it, and you would like me to share it, uh, ow, <laughs> there we have it, people, woo, um, if you'd like me to share that, then you can just let me know by using the hashtag creating with Cassie, if you share it either on Facebook or Instagram, what's the other one called, Twitter, there we go, all right, so here's that, now that I've brought that in a little bit more, I can go ahead and add a uh, flipper right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just so you guys can kind of see. And of course, everything is just gently tacked into place. <sighs> Y'all are laughing and sad. About Who's laughing about my bloody thumb? Just tack the roving as I roll. Yeah, I did. And then, Meryl, you do... Oh my God, <laughs> I just tapped myself again. Let me put this on the cushion. Meryl, the more you stab it, the more dense it will be. Um, I love all the felted things you folks have created, Sue says. I know, Sue. It's just like things I would have never thought of or imagined. I, that's the beauty, I feel like, of needle felting and of wet felting is that there's so many things you can do with it that um, you're just limited by your imagination. Right? Yes. Sue, so tonight I have really earned my band-aids. This is the only night I think I've actually done. I think it's because it's like a sculpture and you're having to hold it so much. Boy, that if I if you've never seen a masterpiece before, boom, now you have. I love the paintbrush card. I know, Darla. That paintbrush cardigan was. I wonder if that person's joining us. Everybody's sad. <laughs> Are you sad about my bloody thumbs? Oh, boy. Okay, so now I'm just going for it on the other side. And again, I've just gently tacked everything in place because I feel like I can then go back and really kind of go bananas later when I am watching Breaking Bad and having a glass of grown-up grapefruit juice. So there you have it. That's, um, that's my night. All right, so let's see if I can get this to match some... How many of you use the Band-Aid I included? Sue wants to know. Hey, give Sue a thumbs up if you had to use that Band-Aid. I know everybody thought the Band-Aid was so funny because there were so many people who mentioned it. <laughs> I have, I've never felt it, but always wanted to try. Does that create a secure bond? Could a child pull it apart? Um, I, that's a great question, Sasha. Yes, a child could easily pull this apart because I'm just now gently tacking it in place. But look at this one Sue made. This thing, I mean, I'm tugging on it. This thing is pretty solid. And that's because she really needle felted this a lot. So it's nice and dense. And she really attached that securely. Right now, <laughs> oh no, Ashley spilled her great grown up juice on her eight year old report last night. <gasps> wow. That is, I bet her teacher totally understood. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my gosh, that's the best thing ever. 
Um, so yeah, all that to say, Sasha, I think that a child could pull it apart to prevent that from happening. Don't let no child be touching your stuff or, um, just make sure you needle felt it some more. Now that I've kind of gotten everything in its place, I'm just stabbing it a little bit more. <laughs> All I see is Morticia and Eddie Munster with a bald spot. Oh my. Oh my. All right. So now I'm just trying to make it symmetrical. Man, making stuff symmetrical is tough. You're welcome, Sasha. Ashley says she, he needs to do it over. Oh, without mom's help. Apparently, Ashley. Um, may I see the back of the penguin? Sure. Ta-da! I'm assuming you don't want to see the back of mine. I think I'm going to make a little line right there for some penguin butt cheeks. Most of it's pretty solid, but my two-year-old granddaughter twisted the flippers off of her penguin. Well, there you have it. So maybe it's not like something a two-year-old should be given as a toy. I don't know. Uh, they just like to tear stuff up. Mine looks like Ursula. <laughs> oh, man. Mine's balding Morticia. It's the funny. It's funny how things look while they're in process. And look, I got these like little doolollies at the bottom. I don't know what a doololly is. Well, now I do because there you have it. All right. So now I'm just kind of forming it. And let me go ahead and get this other one on top. And I, oh, look at that. It'll help with the comb over. Okay. I'm still starting to see penguin or maybe 80s rock band morticia where she had like a hair blowout or something so i'm just going to kind of get this to cover that part up or just use more black roving on top um <laughs> girl lily has that strip of white in her hair that's true that's true all right so let me see if i can fill this in oh by the way i won't be sh i'll share this video soon on youtube for those of you who maybe need catching up or you're just watching tonight and you're not um, not needle felting, um, so I'll make sure to post this on YouTube. But if you would like me to share your needle felted masterpieces, I will wait until Sunday, just like I did this week, to give you guys more time. Looks like one arm's a little bit longer than the other. There we go. We'll shorten it a little bit. Beware. Great. Oh, yes. Sue, Sue says keep these. And I know somebody else mentioned this too. Keep this roving away from your cat. My cat, she has no teeth. Poor little thing. She loves to lick the roving. It's like she's grooming it. And you know, those little hooks on her teeth, they just grab that roving and she ends up like, you know, swallowing some. And I don't need to clean up any more hairballs than I already do. So definitely keep it away from the cats. Okay, I am think I'm closing in. Now, let's talk about how I'm not going to finish the entire thing, but I think I'm getting close. I do want to make like a little palette and a, a bow, and I want to fix the fact that my eyeballs are, there we go, a little bit wonky, and da -da -da, I so want to make a little booty crack right there. Um, oh, well, at least your 11-year-old was trying. Okay. <laughs> Catherine, that is hilarious. Her cat hijacked her lumpy ball. So it sounds like a personal problem, Catherine. All right, so I'm just going to overlap a little bit of this and that. You bring this up. It's like Sue said you could cut this if you need to, if it was too long. I'm just going to tack this in place because I'm about to put my uh, flippers there. Please make booty cheeks. I think I need to, Ashley. Okay. Pardon my nose. All right, so let's talk about the feetsies. I got my lovely, beautiful penguin toes, penguin feet, and it looks like, holy cow, what is this, Sasquatch? Those are the biggest feet ever. What is your hashtag for Instagram? Um, creating with Cassie, all one word. My husband says it's the worst hashtag ever. Thank you for the encouragement, dear. Um, it's a little long, but it's it was the only hashtag that wasn't taken. Do you know what I'm saying? Crazy people stabbing stuff was already taken. Can you believe that? What? Oh, no. Don't search it. I tried. Um, Lily Munster. Is that the daughter? Oh. Easy to remember, creating with Cassie. There you go. Kind of, sort of. All 
All right, so I'm just right now trying to bring this foot in a little bit, and that'll also make it more uh, 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 dense, kind of like me. So dense, oh my god. There we go. I'm going to try to get this other one to match up before I attach. Now, um, the only things left if we're doing this, I don't want to say basic pink one because that just doesn't sound nice. The basic um, are just making two little spheres for the eyes, and then we're going to talk about how to make that beak. Is, is there anybody out there still? Anybody with me? Wonder. Morticia was from the Adams Family. I'm, I'm so curious to know which one of those shows came first and which one was like a dead rip off of the other. So I loved them both. I mean, I grew up after that era, but I remember watching reruns. What is the penguin saying? I'm going with Priscilla the penguin. Because, you know, I'm from Tennessee. We like our Presleys, y'all. Yeah. Even though they're from Memphis. It's okay, we won't hold it against them. If anybody has never been to Graceland, it's it's an interesting place to visit. Y'all should check it out if you're ever in Memphis. Get you some barbecue, and go to Graceland. All right. How do you make it a cone? Mine is like a burrito. Um, to make it more like a cone, Meryl, it, you're just going to need to needle felt this end more to make this part more compact and dense. Like this part's a lot more squishy. She didn't needle felt it as much. This part is a lot more dense. So I'm imagining as Sue was doing it, because this is how I did mine, she just needle felt it a lot on the end, kind of like if you were turning a piece of wood and you're trying to narrow it here. So she's just like needle felting and turning to get this part more conical. But even on this one, it's not really that more narrow. It's all basically the same width. It's just kind of rounded at the end. So now that I've got this, I've got my little, oh yeah, much less Sasquatch-esque. Just went to Graceland over spring break. Kelly, what did you think? Um, did you make the penguin's body tonight? I'm late to the party. Yeah, I did. And Desiree, I, um, I did it with the roll of uh, core. What is it called? Core roving? Forget all the cinnamon's called. Um, but that's what you're going to use, and you're just going to roll, needle felt, roll, needle felt, stop, drop, tuck, needle felt, roll, something. But as you go, you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this when you're done. I've been to Graceland six times. Wow. That's a lot. So now I'm just going to attach the feet. So I want them to stick out a little bit. And I'm going to hold them in place. Got my penguin flipped upside down to do so. Core wall. Thank you, Heather. I already done forgot. Thanks, Earl. Um, Darla went to Graceland and Nashville. Darla, you didn't tell me you were in town. The Adams Family and the Munsters are 50 and started in the same week. What? Seriously? In 1964, it must have been a great week for fans. Wow. How fun is that? That's weird. I bet it was like... One television network found out about a concept for a show and another one caught on too. And you know what I mean? And they just kind of copied. But they're, they're a little different, but kind of the same. And so I'm just going to gently tack that in place. Oh, i got to get a little crooked. There we go. Um, so there's the feet, if you can see that very well. And now I'm just going to quickly show you how to make the beak before I sign out. And then I will finish... Um, by just adding eyes. And um, yeah, so if you made something else, I can't wait to see it. Don't forget the only way, not the only way, but one great way for me to be able to see it and then share it is to um, use that hashtag I mentioned, creating with Cassie. So to make your beak, I'm just going to pull this and it's basically the same as the flipper. Get a little bit of roving. And I'm just going to stab this. I'm going to bring in the ends a little bit. Once I had all the parts of the penguin complete, I then started needle felting them to the penguin. So here you see me just adding more black roving 
to the penguin, really securing the feet into place. To create the beak, I did it much like how I did the feet. I needle felted it on the cushion first, flipping it over back and forth before attaching it to the face. Sue has told me that one great way to clean your surface that you're needle felting on is to use a lint roller. And that will make it so as you're needle felting, you won't get those fibers from your previous projects on your current ones. For me, I wanted my penguin to be a little bit of an artiste, so I needle felted a bow underneath its beak. I created separately a, a beret, a palette, and a paintbrush. Those things, once they were completed separately, they were then needle felted onto my penguin. So the way things are secured is with needle felting. I hope that you've had fun creating whatever it is you decided to do when you were exploring sculptural felting. Talk to you guys soon.